everybody welcome and welcome back to my channel my name is Madison Page before we get started I just want to let you guys know that I will be reading off of a screen as you can see by the title this is my part one of my disabilities video and I just wanted to make sure that I've got everything right so I will be reading off a screen I will try to make as much like eye contact with you as possible so let's just jump into the video <laughs> So for part one of my disabilities videos, I wanted to talk about motor neuron disease. Now I've had motor neuron disease for my entire life. I didn't know what it was, I just knew that I had it and the way that I knew that I had it is because it is in my medical records which I have access to via an app and it is what is cited on my disability parking permit. So what is motor neuron disease? I did have to google it. Now I don't suggest googling you know diseases and stuff without knowing what you're looking for. Motor neuron disease is essentially an umbrella term for a group of diseases that cause the death of nerve cells or neurons that control the muscles that allow us to move, speak, swallow and breathe. There are four main types of MND, or motor neuron disease, and the first one that usually pops up when you google it is ALS. Thankfully I don't have that but you know when I was googling it it for the first time and that was what pops up and it's known to be you know a serious illness with a not so great prognosis. I kind of freaked out but after looking into it further I, I clearly don't have ALS but yeah that's what I just said don't you know google stuff without knowing what you're looking for. It can lead you down a wrong path and that path could be you know a bit alarming. Now while I don't have ALS I was never actually diagnosed with a specific type. As a kid and even now I have never quite made sense to the medical community. I have a whole bunch of symptoms that maybe fit with one thing and then a whole bunch of symptoms that maybe fit with another and then a whole bunch of symptoms that don't really fit with anything and don't make sense compared to what Ever else I have. In regards to motor neuron disease, I have symptoms that are consistent with not one, not two, but three different types of motor neuron disease. Two of those types are in the four, you know, main, main types of MND, and another is kind of like, it's still a type of MND, but it's also kind of like its own thing. So let's talk about these different types. As a baby, there was some concern for my weak muscles and for the way I slept, apparently I slept kind of like in a flopped sort of way. A muscle biopsy was done on my leg, which I did talk a little bit about in my explaining my scars video, which will be up there. However, no substantial results came from it, which I learned muscle biopsies are not one of the tests that I used to diagnose MND anyway, so that kind of makes sense. However, I was diagnosed with hypotonia or floppy baby syndrome as it's sometimes called. Now hypotonia is a fancy word for weak muscle tone and it is a symptom of a type of motor neuron disease called spinal muscular atrophy or SMA. SMA is a hereditary disease affecting lower motor neurons. It is autosomal recessive meaning both of my parents would have to have been carrying but not necessarily showing the effects of the abnormal gene which in this case is the SMN1 gene. Now a normal SMN1 gene makes an important protein that contributes to the survival of motor neurons. An abnormal gene obviously doesn't. It does however cause weakness and wasting of the skeletal muscles. SMA is classified into three different types depending on age of onset, severity and progression. SMA1, also known as Wernig Hoffman's disease, is the type that my symptoms most align with. Symptoms include hypotonia, as already mentioned, diminished limb movements, lack of tendon reflexes, which we're going to talk about my reflexes in a minute, fasciculations, tremors, swallowing and feeding difficulties, and impaired breathing. Scoliosis is also something that tends to develop in cases of SMA1. Actually, I can't remember if it's all of the SMAs or just one. 
other way that tends to develop which as you know I do have scoliosis however that is being put into an entirely different video so we're not going to talk too much about it now. As well as hypotonia I do have a lack of reflexes and impaired breathing but once again I'm going to dedicate an entirely different video to my shitty lungs. The other symptoms of the disease don't really affect me though I did have to google what fasciculations means and it kind of sounds like something I deal with but I, I'm just not sure enough to confirm. Around the time of my main health issues which was you know infancy early childhood the prognosis for this disease was around two years however quite clearly I am still here so obviously that that was you know that didn't affect me. The prognosis of it now that medical advances have been made is relatively normal lifespan. Now another type of MND that my symptoms align with that once again is relatively normal lifespan is primary lateral sclerosis or PLS. It's a rare form of MND and it's usually pretty difficult to diagnose so again I haven't been diagnosed with any specific type I've just always had the umbrella term of motor neuron disease on my medical records and this could be you know a reason why difficult to diagnose. It affects the motor neurons causing weakness in the lower limbs. I currently struggle to stand or walk for long periods of time without feeling pretty severe pain in my legs and my back. At the moment I'm even struggling to sit in certain positions without feeling pain in my legs. I've always struggled walking long distances. That was always more to do with my breathing. As an infant I ended up having to wear weighted shoes which were recommended by, I can't remember which, but one of the medical professionals in my team, I had a whole damn team, in the hopes that it would strengthen the muscles in my legs. Other symptoms of PLS that are sometimes presented but don't affect me are clumsiness in the hands and difficulty speaking. Going back to my reflexes for a second, or you know, lack thereof, a lack of reflexes is commonly associated with another type of MND. This one is called progressive muscular atrophy, or PMA. PMA has a slower rate of progression than those with PLS. Those with PMA can again live a relatively normal lifespan. Unlike PLS however, PMA affects the lower motor neurons so it affects like your arms and your hands and stuff. Along with a lack of reflexes, PMA is also characterized by muscle weakness and wasting similar to SMA. Early symptoms may be felt by way of weakness or clumsiness in the hands which just said I'd I don't have. Actually I do have a little weakness in my hands but I will talk about that a bit further down this page. I'm sorry if I like genuinely sound like a robot reading this but like I, I don't quite know how else to present it as it is a lot of information and it's a lot of new information and I just I don't want to get anything wrong. While my hands are usually fine my arms are pretty weak. I struggle to hold my arms up for long periods of time which makes tasks like brushing or washing my hair, raising my hand to ask a question though I, I don't have to do that anymore thank god, pretty difficult and usually painful. I also struggle to lift heavy objects but unless you're someone who like works on your arms a lot of people struggle to lift heavy objects so I don't really consider that to be like a big deal. As I said in the beginning and as you now may be able to tell as I'm like sort of explaining what symptoms apply with me and which don't. I have a lot of symptoms and they're kind of all over the place so any you know strong solid diagnosis would be difficult. Another sort of curveball that my body decided to throw at doctors is that while I don't have reflexes that can be found super easy in like the traditional sense so like I don't have reflexes with the hammer thingy. I do have like super deep reflexes which were found with a test that I can't remember what it was called but it had something to do with like electric pulses or whatever. So yeah technically technically I do have reflexes like way deep down there but they're not easy to find. A funny story from my childhood to break up all of this robot science stuff. I used to be used as a prank for med students. Senior doctors who knew me and knew my case would send them in and ask them to look for my reflexes which of course they couldn't and so it was kind of like a fun prank that they played on the med students and then it would turn into a teaching moment. But yeah that's something I remember pretty strongly because they were still doing it up until recently and so yeah that's 
Just a funny little tidbit to break up all of this jargon. Again, as I said in the beginning, most of the specific information on each type of MND was found via Google and dedicated MND websites, all of which will be linked down below if you want to go have a read about MND yourself. I myself didn't have a lot of information to go on because a lot of the diagnosing and the testing and you know the doctors doctoring was during my childhood which I don't remember a lot of. I was diagnosed with PTSD last month and a specific to my PTSD is that I use dissociation as a coping mechanism and my therapist and I have worked out that I essentially dissociated most of my childhood away so especially the medical stuff I don't I don't remember a lot of it the things that I do remember aren't my memories they're like mum's memories told to me so she did have to help me a lot with this as well as Google she mainly helped me with what symptoms I had as a kid and you know what tests were performed she didn't know some of the names either or she did actually I just immediately forgot them because that's how my brain works with medical stuff. She helped me with what symptoms I had, um, tests that were done, all that. However, she did have a lot of gaps in her knowledge as well. She chopped that down to partially being doctors having gaps in their knowledge because once again, a lot of my things are pretty rare and in some cases so rare that they didn't actually exist at the time. I don't know how specific that is to the MND or just my health in general, but yeah, some of some of her gaps are medical gaps as well. Some of it is also probably because she was a teen mum and in some cases doctors didn't really see a need to share information with her because of that. She also kind of just feels like it's what do doctors do sometimes. They can't be bothered explaining what's going on so they just don't say anything. I've definitely experienced some of that. For example, regarding my spine or my lungs recently, I've been asked to come in for like testing and stuff but not been told why or been told really anything else other than you need this test and you need it now. So yeah, there will be some gaps in this in regards to me but I've tried to give you as much personal information as I can remember, as mum can remember, and as we just know in general. She did joke how I was patient zero some things, and how doctors would essentially make up names for symptoms that I was showing. For example, I have diaphragmatic palsy, which at the time at least in New Zealand wasn't really a recognised thing. It is now. I did Google it and it also turns out it's another symptom of MND. But at the time doctors didn't really know what it was or what to call it but because that's the symptom that I was presenting and palsy means paralysed, they just went with that. A lot of my symptoms, especially when it comes to lower leg and back pain, are kind of hard for me to gauge. I don't, I don't know a lot of the time whether it comes from the MND or my scoliosis spinal fusion. It's also hard for me to gauge how this disease will progress. Progressions of motor neuron disease include legs getting weaker and difficulty walking, which as I've already said I do experience that. Foot drop or the inability to lift the front of your foot, which I I don't currently experience that. Everyday tasks such as turning taps, doing hair, getting more difficult as your hands and arms weaken. Now this is where I'm going to talk about my hands because I, I don't think that they're weak or clumsy but turning on taps and stuff like that is kind of a challenge for me so I don't know if that would class as my hands being weak or if it's just general arm weakness. Difficulty keeping your head upright. Now when I was thinking about this I didn't know how to answer whether or not I do experience this because like right now my neck really hurts and I do have an urge to just sit here like this but I don't know if that's again neck pain back pain i don't know if it's motor neuron disease or scoliosis so i don't know if my neck is hurting because of the scoliosis thing or because i'm experiencing this i do however have i've always been more comfortable with chairs that have higher backs so that i can rest my head also in cars 
as long as I'm not driving, obviously. I do tend to lean my head back, even if there is no headrest there. I'll just sort of have my head on the back of the chair and be looking up at the roof of the car because that's how I feel comfortable. So I guess I do experience that. I don't know if it's because of the MND or just because it's a personal preference. And I don't know if it's a personal preference because of the MND or just because I'm lazy. I don't want to sit here and be like, like a hypochondriac. I don't want to be like, I think I have this. I think I have this. I want to be very clear and like let you know what I do and what I don't experience. And if I'm not sure, I will tell you as I have been talking through this with you. An emotional response may be affected such as laughing or crying involuntarily. Now I do laugh kind of involuntarily, but that's more because I have the maturity of a seven year old, not from the MND. Difficulty swallowing and speaking. Now I have had difficulty swallowing in the past, but that is more because of scar tissue buildup in my throat, which will be talked about in the respiratory video. Respiratory muscles weakening, making it difficult to breathe. That one's a big hell yeah, but again, different video. Memory learning difficulty, which is rare, which I, I don't experience, and dementia, which is extra rare, which I so far <laughs> don't experience. So yeah, some of these already affect me. Some of them don't, and I don't know if they ever will. The website I got the list of progressions off, which again, it will be down below, didn't state which progression goes with which type. So because of that and because I don't know my type in general, I don't know which of these progressions will affect me. I do know, however, from what doctors have told me in my life, that my health will get worse as I get older. I joked with my mum the other day how I must have thought they were bluffing or something when they said that because every time something does get worse I'm almost shocked by it. I do believe that I will probably require a wheelchair one day full time as I do need one occasionally now especially if I've been out for longer than an hour I, I need to sit down but I do try and take things one day at a time. I'm not sure which video will come next. It could be the one about scoliosis, it could be my respiratory issues, it's probably going to be the scoliosis one. I did consider making a video about my mental health but because I I'm already pretty open about mental health stuff. I didn't really see the need to give it yet another singular video. I started with this one because it is the disability that at least mentally and emotionally affects me the least because it happened in my childhood. Well, it's happening now. I'm, I'm, I'm living with it now, but like the whole diagnosis, finding out what it is, all that stuff happened in my childhood. I don't really have like an emotional connection with it, if that makes any sense at all. It's, it's the one that upsets me the least. I thank you guys for your patience. I know that I promised a disabilities video last year but as I've said disabilities and my medical stuff is pretty difficult for me to talk about. It is a huge part of my PTSD. I really struggle. It took me several years to even say the sentence I am disabled. So yeah I thank you guys for your patience. I also thank you for allowing me to split these videos up. I imagine this one's going to be pretty fucking long anyway so if you wanted me to talk about all my disabilities in one you better have been prepared to sit down for like two hours. But anyway I thank you for letting me split it into parts. It's, it's a lot easier for me and my mind to handle. For other disability related videos, check out once again my explaining my scars video which would have been up there at some point already and my not your average how to video which I'll put up now. I also plan to make a video discussing what it's like to be intimate as a disabled person. If you have any further questions please don't hesitate to ask. You can either leave them in the comments down below or message me on one of my social medias, all of which are usually linked down below. Please remember I'm not a doctor. I am only able to speak from my personal experience and the information in my medical records. If you relate to any of this information or have any of the symptoms mentioned, I do strongly suggest you go and see a doctor. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. I've already let you know what to comment. Subscribe if you want. Tap the bell notification thing to be notified every time I post and I will see you next time. Bye. And I'm back for a quick second. I had this here just as a way to white balance my camera. However, it does have 
some of my diagnoses at the top of it. It's, it's a medical letter. And it does have some of my diagnoses at the top of it. It says here SMA type 3, which I'm a little surprised about. There is a reason I didn't mention it in this video, and it's because none of my symptoms really fit. I'll bring up the symptoms right now. So, difficulty running, climbing steps, or rising from a chair, which I have difficulty running, but that's just from me being unfit. A fine tremor in the fingers. Lower extremities are most often affected. Complications include scoliosis and joint contractures. And yeah, I don't. I don't really experience any of those. It does say chronic shortening of muscles or tendons around joints, which may be true, I don't remember, so I don't want to give a definite answer on that. But for the most part, it does not sound like what I experienced, so it's very surprising that it is on an official medical letter. But I guess, you know, if it's there, then sure. But yeah.